news. Now, yesterday we talked about how the deep state, they are in a huge amount of trouble. And we're going to be seeing a lot of undiscovered truths come out that we never even knew about. And we're already starting to see certain individuals coming out of the woodwork and they're filing lawsuits. And we can see that former Secret Service agent Gary Byrne, he's filed a racketeer influenced and corrupt organizations suit, which is a RICO suit against what some call the Democrat deep state. The defendants in the case include the Clinton Foundation. We see John Podesta, George Soros, Hillary herself, David Brock, the Clinton Global Initiative. And this is a civil filing. So I don't think we're going to see anyone go to jail for this. But what's very interesting, and I don't think this is going to go anywhere because the presiding judge over this lawsuit is Paul L. Friedman and this individual is a Bill Clinton appointee. So this matter right here will probably go nowhere, but we can see that things are definitely starting. Now, in the Mueller case, where he basically indicted uh, the Concord Management, a Russian company that had these Russians that supposedly put out these uh, different stories which swayed the election, it looks like the case isn't going well. Now remember, Mueller really didn't have any evidence. He never thought that the Russians were going to come here, never really prepared for this. I think this was a publicity stunt. And the attorneys representing the Concord Management, one of the Russian companies that Mueller team accused of impacting the 2016 presidential election, election, crushed the unlawfully appointed special counsel in court last weekend. Now, Concord's management lawyers previously said Mueller's indicted the proverbial ham sandwich. The reason the Concord management attorney called the case a proverbial ham sandwich was because one of the entities indicted by Mueller's team, Concord Catering, was not in existence at the time the crimes were alleged to have taken place. Now, this weekend, the Concord management team filed a motion against the Mueller's team protective order request to conceal all data related to their case. Now, Mueller's team has not presented one iota of discovery in the criminal case. Robert Mueller rolled out this indictment of Russians as a PR stunt to justify the witch hunt. And his team, they are not prepared to try this case. They can't handle this. And it's completely falling apart in front of their face. I mean, how do you indict Concord Catering? It didn't even exist. So basically what they're doing is they just looked at all the different things and said, okay, we'll use this. We'll put it out in the news. We indicted Russians. They'll never come here and it will look fantastic. And the Russian company came here and Mueller's whole entire case, it's not working. They're floundering. And of course, the corporate media is not saying anything about this. There's a viral photo that was going around about an immigrant child crying inside a cage. It was on CNN and many other uh, social media platforms. And it showed a little child behind bars crying, asking for his mom or dad. And this photo was favorited about 38,000 times. It was on Facebook. CNN, they put it up there. Then they were forced to admit that the picture was actually taken during a June 10th protest against White House immigration policies at Dallas City Hall. And when you zoom out from this, you can see that, yes, these individuals are not in cages. They're just a fence with a little mat and something, and they can walk in and out. Actually, there's a photo, photo of the child outside of it. There's, if you zoom out even further, you can see the presses there, microphones, you can see the little child in there. And basically the child just followed his older brother in there and started to cry um, for his mother and father. But again, the uh, post was taken down, but you can still find it on the Wayback Machine. And 
basically this whole thing was completely fake phony and false and they were being called out on it we see benjamin netanyahu's wife she was indicted on fraud in a prepared food affair basically mus misusing state funds and ordering food and we can see there's a lot of investigations going on with netanyahu and his wife and the police are looking into this and it looks like they brought charges against her we see out in afghanistan president ghani is basically reworking his offer to the taliban instead of one week of a ceasefire he thought to himself maybe we should extend this and really show that we are serious so president ghani is saying let's have a taliban ceasefire for one year now the taliban hopefully will look at this and say okay you know something that makes more sense because when you look at the reports and you look at the people in Afghanistan, they're tired of fighting. Fighting. They're tired of all of this. Actually, they enjoyed the peace. They all got along. They all talked to each other. And basically, they want all this to come to an end. And I think this is where this is heading. And I think the Taliban was waiting for something much longer so they can really sit down and work out a peace deal and I think this is where all of this is going we see Merkel she is out in Jordan and she is saying during her meeting with Kim King Abdullah the second of Jordan that the world needs to take action against Iran's aggressive tendencies now I thought Europe was with Iran you know the p5 plus one deal that we're gonna support them we're gonna fund them and now it seems like it's all falling apart. Everything that they were saying, well, it doesn't seem like it's really true. We see the U.S. naval ship that carried out the attacks against the Syrian uh, government, which was really not against the Syrian government, was against the deep state. That ship, the USS Higgins, which was one of three, that one is returning to California and it's going to uh, basically return to its home port in San Diego. The other two ships, I believe, will start to turn around and come home because I think what's happening in Syria, it's coming down to the end right now because the Syri Syrian army, they have liberated around 463 square miles in the southeast of Syria, and they're liberating more and more towns. And we can see right now it is really over for Al-Qaeda, for the Islamic State, for the moderate rebels. It's all said and done right now. And no matter what Israel, what the deep state, what the coalition forces do, they can't do anything in this situation. And even the southwest part of Syria, there are talks going on right now behind the scenes. And I think what's going to happen eventually is Al-Tanf will be turned over and the troops will be leaving Syria and I think this is where this is all going at this point and I think what they're trying to do here is basically shape the narrative to make it look like it was a positive withdrawal from this country saying that the Islamic State was beaten the terrorist groups were beaten and now we don't need to be there Iran doesn't need to be there and all foreign troops are withdrawing right now except for Russia and I think this is how they're going to end up playing this Let's get into some of Q's posts right now. We're going to start off with a, with a post 1576 on June 20th. And it looks like Pam Warner, Q Annan, follow the white rabbit. She went on to say that I'm at the Trump rally in Duluth, Minnesota, waiting in a huge room full of people to get in. And a guy gets up on a table and starts talking about Q. He starts chanting where we go one those of us who knew responded loudly we go all many times over and over i had to explain to many people around me what it meant was so awesome q responded we hear you patriots where we go one we go all post 1577 there's a video of trump giving the speech and there's an individual, this guy, wearing a Q on his shirt. And this was put up in 
Anonymous put this up on post 1577. Q responded together, where we go one, where we go all, hashtag winning. And on the video, you can see Trump pointing to the man with the letter Q. So this is a confirmation, once again, a direct confirmation, saying, yes, I know Q, and I believe Trump most likely is Q+. Plus. Who is Q? Don't exactly know as of yet, but it could be many people. It could be one person. We don't know. Post-1578, Q says, look for more direct confirmation. It's time. Post-1579, boom. Q gives a link on Twitter for Representative Mac Getz. And he has a lot of brackets, uh, three brackets, then close three brackets, brackets, two brackets, then close two brackets, bracket, bracket, then Q. And basically three strikes and you're out. That's really what that means. One, two, and then three brackets. So Representative Matt Getz put up a uh, tweet that says, if we were really serious about oversight, we'd say the documents will be present at 10 a.m. tomorrow. If they're not, at 10.01, we start the impeachment proceedings regarding Rod Rosenstein. Very interesting. And then we go to post 1580. Q puts up the same thing. Boom. The same thing that we saw before in post 1579. And at the bottom, it says, Are they serious? Are they serious? Well, are the Republicans serious about this? I think so. After all, after all enough is enough. Post 1581, Q says, We serve at the pleasure of the President. We left the decision on timing to him. Today at the rally, he made his decision. Shift in tactics, attack with a carrot sign. Q. And Anon explains this. I believe it was the rally overall that left POTUS feel that it is time. The up-close view of Q shirts, hats, along with the chanting, where we go one, we go all. POTUS has seen that enough of us are in the know. Confident that we can handle and help inform others about what is coming and why it's happening. The threats today against his son and granddaughter had to have helped in this decision making. POTUS understands they are becoming desperate, leading them to go full on crazy. This is when an attack is needed and when it can hurt them the most. Beast mode activated. And we can see right now that this is the scary part of all of this. And it took a long time to awake a lot of people, the great awakening, because a lot of people, they're still sleeping. And we know there's a lot of people, new people visiting the boards, listening to Q, listening to what's going on, doing research, trying to understand what is going on. And when this all comes out, and they're saying it's time, because it took a long time to basically investigate, research, put everything together, connect all the dots. The deep state right now is not just going to sit by. They most likely will try something, something big. Even though the last false flag was stopped, I believe that they still stick to their agendas where they think eventually they will win. Post-1582 now that's what I call VIP and what this is is a picture of that guy wearing Q and it says Trump Pence rally VIP why is this relevant that's what it says at the bottom of the shirt so I don't think any decodes are really necessary we just see that Q and why is this relevant we've heard this before so what is the potential timeline right now? Because we've been hearing a lot of dark to light. We've been seeing sky events. So morning sun brings heat. This is June 21st, 
solstice. Full moon coming June 27th to 28th. So I'm thinking we might see something between June 27th and June 28th. We might even learn something new between June 30th and July 1st because undiscovered stars learned missions forward. So we're going to see a lot more of all of this. So post-1583, which is June 21st, which is today, Q says, and there's a picture of the VIP Annan with that picture, January 20th, 2017, June 20th, 2018, exactly 17 months, 17 once again. What letter is 17? Q, do you believe in coincidences? God bless you all. 1584. Q takes the snapshot of what we just read, and at the bottom he says, or she, or many people, we told you proofs were going to be important very soon. There are going to be many new eyes looking at Q. Be ready, five by five. We thank you for your service, Q. Post 1585, he does a snapshot of the last two posts that he put up there and says, we stand, we fight, together, organized riots are now being planned. Q says, countermeasures are in place. Resistance far smaller than portrayed by the mainstream media. Attacks will intensify. You collectively are massive threat. Censorship applied to scale down impact reach. It's failing. Trust yourself. Public awakening. Q. Now, again, what the mainstream media normally does with these riots, they do close-up shots because they focus the camera very close to you know a group of maybe 50 people and, and then they report that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there when there really aren't. But we can see right now, they're not organizing for protests, they're organizing for riots. And Q says there are count, countermeasures in place, and we'll have to see what that is. But we can see right now, they want rioting. They want this in the streets. They want America looking at this, saying, you know, we don't want Trump. We don't want patriots. We don't want any of this. So something big is going to come. Will they be able to stop it? We don't know. Q saying yes. 1586 took a snapshot of what we just talked about. At the bottom, Q says, question and answer on Saturday. Time, TBD, to be determined. And I believe this is the first time that Q has ever set up some type of question and answer. So it looks like Q is going to be answering a lot of questions, and I think there's going to be a lot of questions thrown at Q. But what we're seeing right now is the deep state they're very nervous, they're very afraid, and they are definitely planning more things. I mean, the false flag didn't go. I don't think that's stopped. I think they're recalculating, replanning, trying to figure things out, and they're going to push riots. They've tried this before. They might even throw an event here where someone gets hurt or something like that. But you can see at this point, they are not finished. They never will be. They're going to continually push, push, push until they get their way. And what's going to happen right now is that we're going to be learning a lot more. A lot of undiscovered truths are going to be coming out that we didn't even know about. And we're going to see it all come out into the open. Like Q says, the time is now. We're ready. They have it all. And the push 